how does the compiler know when a you know certain statement can be compiled and when can't it be i mean besides the syntax thing syntax thing means the syntax errors are generated by a strict set of rules that the compiler follows to determine if a particular statement is syntactically correct or not but then there's another phase of the compilation in which the compiler does type checking to make sure that you can actually assign, let's say, the variable x to the value 5. Because if x is not an integer type, you can't assign the number 5 to it. So let's take a look at a simple example. Let's say we've got an integer called a, and we do a equals 2 plus 10. Now obviously this will compile. Uh, you know, it's not a complete program, but these two lines will pass, will, will pass the syntax check and uh, it looks like it should also pass the semantic check to make sure that this is a correct thing that you can do. But how does the compiler do that? So the first thing the compiler does is analyze the types of each one of the things that it sees here. It sees A, and it goes, oh, I know that's an int, right? The reason I know that's int is because that's how it was declared. And I know 2 is an int because that's what integers look like. They look like just numbers. And the 10, as well, is an int. So it goes through the statement, and it tags each one of the, the pieces with what type of thing that is. And now it goes and it analyzes uh, what's going to happen when we start doing things like adding and assigning things together. In fact, what it has done is it's built up a, a tree that looks like this. And then along with it comes all these types that it knows. So it looks at this tree, and then what it, what it tries to do is it tries to figure out what's the type of this thing at the very top. And the only way to figure out what the type of the thing at the very top is, is to know what the type of the things right below it are. And it doesn't know what the type of this plus is. So the way you figure out what the type of the plus is, is you look at the things that are right below it. And here we do know what those are. We've got two integers. So when you add two integers together, you get an integer. So now it knows that the result of adding these two things together is going to be an integer. It doesn't necessarily know at this point what the value is, but it knows it's going to be an integer because when you add two integers together, you are going to get an integer. You can't get a float. You can't get a string. You can't get a Boolean out of that. You're going to get an integer. And now it knows that a is an integer and the result of the plus is an integer. So now it knows that the result of the uh, assignment is also going to be integer. And this is good because now we're taking an integer and we are copying it over into a variable that's also an integer. And so this passes the test, right? This is going to compile and this is going to work. This is going to run. So the type of the thing on the right is the same as the type of the thing on the left. And so we know this assignment is going to work. Let's look at another example. Let's say we have floop b, a variable called b whose type is floop. And we go b is equal to 15 plus a, where a is the one over from the first problem. So what happens here? Well, we, you know, we still build up that tree. We've got the equals, and then a b, and a plus, and a 15, and a. And we know that 15 is an int, because that's what integers look like. We know that a is an int, because that's how it was declared. And we know that b is a floop. So when we start combining the nodes of this tree, we do int and int when added together, make an int. And now we got a problem. We're trying to take an integer and assign it to a variable that's a floop. And that generates what's called a type mismatch. Okay, so just to recap here, an int plus an int results in an int, and we are trying to assign that to a floop. And that will not work. And this is all assuming that we haven't defined a floop to also be an integer type. Let's say it's something else completely different. Okay, so this is not going to work because we've got a type mismatch here. Or at the, at the worst, it might generate a warning that says, hey, it looks like you're trying to assign an int to a floop. This is probably not going to work, uh, but maybe I'll let it slide. Okay, so now you kind of see how that works. Let's try another example. Let's say I've got int x is an array of four elements. And so the question is, will this compile? Will this pass the semantic checks? Got it. Stick says yes. Well, each element in the array is an integer. So when you pull that out, 
It's going to just be integer multiplication. Okay. So we know that 6 is obviously an integer. And we know that 2 is an integer. Uh, but what's the type of x? x is an array of integers. Yeah. So this is an integer array. And a is also an integer. So just on the face of it, it doesn't appear this is going to work because we've got some mixed up types in here. But, you know, the computer is going to generate this little tree. Huh, what goes on the right? Oh, we've got a times here. And we've got a 6 over here. But what goes to the left of that times? The square brackets. Uh-huh. And then there's two things below that. Okay, we know that a is an int. x is an int array. 2 is an int. And 6 is an int. And now what we need to do is work our way back up this tree and figure out what are all the types of the nodes that don't have a type. So we'll start from the lowest leaves down here. And we go, okay, we're applying the bracket operators to x and 2. Are we allowed to do that? So what conditions must be true in order for us to be able to apply the bracket operator to x and 2? Well, the thing inside the brackets must be an integer. Okay, you can't put a string in there. You can't put a floop in there. It's got to be an integer. Uh, and is it? Yes, it is. It's a 2. That's an integer. What has to be the type of the thing out in front of the brackets? It has to be an array. It's got to be an array of, some of sort. something. Yeah. And is it? Yes. It is. X is an array of something. So as long as the thing in front of the brackets is an array of something, um, then we're allowed to apply the bracket operators to that array. What is the result of applying the bracket operator to X and 2? It's the type of the thing X is an array of. Right. So we're basically reaching into that array and we're pulling out what's inside of box number 2. And what's inside of box number 2 must be one of those things that the array can hold, which in this case is going to be an integer. So now we know that the result of applying the array operator to x and 2 is going to be an integer. Now we've got integer here, got integer here. We're multiplying those together, and the result of multiplying two integers is an integer. Integer. Yeah. So we're now trying to copy an integer into an integer, and that's OK. okay let's do another example. Will this work? f equals z or z bracket 2. Yes. That should compile. It should compile. We don't necessarily know what a floop is, but at least it should pass all the checks. Okay, so we know that f is a floop. We know that 2 is an int. And we know that z or z is a floop array. So can we apply the brackets operator to z and 2? Well, yes, that'll work as long as the thing in front of the brackets is an array and the thing inside the brackets is an integer. So the result of this is going to be a floop. And we are uh, trying to assign a floop into a floop. And that works. The types match. And so this is going to work. So I hope that gives you a little bit of insight as to the kind of work the compiler is doing for you to make sure that your program is going to be as free of common mistakes uh, as possible.